It's part three of our conversation with the great Steve Piccaro. We talk about Toto's debut album. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. October 15th, 1978. I remember where I was that day. I remember when I first heard them on the radio. There was always a buzz about that first album. Remember the boss gags thing. Everyone was talking about that. And the fact that these were studio cats and everyone was saying studio cats. And anyone who was serious in music or really loved studio musicians were paying attention to that debut album by Toto. Whenever I get one of the members, I always kind of <laughs> corral them over to talk about at least the big albums. You know, you don't want to hog all the time with the typical ones like Toto 1 and 4 and, and the 7th one or whatever the latest project is. But you have to ask those questions. You want to get those answers in the vaults. Steve Picaro told me something interesting that he wanted another single, not Hold the Line, to be the first single. He'll talk about that. Total One from 1978. You were uh, 1920 when that first album was was recorded. What what could you tell me about about that guy, that that young Steve Picaro? What what was he like going into that project, uh, that band? It was uh, boy, it's a haven't really thought about that too much. But it it um, to be honest with you, for all of us, we all at that young age had such blinders on. We had so much ambition to be studio musicians, to be those guys also to eventually have a band together so there's a part of me that kind of always felt like it was like almost preordained or something you know toto never did a showcase for a record company toto never really did a demo for the record company they saw us on stage with boss gaps so degrees was so successful that almost at every concert we did there was some big record exec wanting to take his picture with Boz or whatever, you know, the album, you know, Silk Degrees was so huge. And they're the record company. So there's Jeff Picaro, there's David Page, there's David Hungate, there's Steve Lukather, there's Steve Picaro. You know what I mean? They saw this backup band that was, you know, and the fact that David Page, that keyboard player, co-wrote every song on Silk Degrees, except one. And so they kind of laid on our laps, you know? When I was talking to Rick Roberts of Firefall, you can find that interview on our Aircom Radio Network channel. He told me something when he's writing songs, he's very careful not to use current slang lingo because in 10 years or 20 years, that might not be cool anymore. The same goes for instrumentation. The same goes for drums, keyboards, and everything else. No, and the sounds, you know, chasing every time you chase fashion, it kind of can easily come and bite in the ass with some of those drum sounds and some of that, uh, some of it is at the time, it was the stuff, but it, some of it doesn't age well. Part four of our conversation with Steve Picaro is coming up next Thursday. If you can, please buy a t-shirt. We've got a whole bunch of new designs coming up in the next few weeks, but most of the folks who buy our t-shirts like the big ones with the big emblem right in front, it helps support our channel. Partial proceeds going to St. Jude Hospitals. Make sure you comment on our video, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. I'm John Bowden. This is Rocky Stream Music. Mm -hmm.